again, everybody. Ron Metris here again. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a little different topic. Normally, I would be making a video about uh, meteorites of one sort or another, mostly iron, since that's mostly what I collect. I also have another part of my collection that has to do with tektites, which is another interest of mine. I've collected some very nice ones over the years, and I'd like to share those with you. So, uh, let's take a look at those. See what you think. So, for starters, let's look at a few Indochinites. Now, this is what got me into collecting tektites. I really wasn't looking for these. Um, I was at the Ventura County Fairgrounds a few years back, and I was looking for iron meteorites, as usual, and I wasn't having much luck. So, I ran into this one fellow that had, he said he didn't have any uh, meteorites, but he had some tektites. So, he showed me a few. This is one of those. I ended up buying two from him, and uh, it just kind of grabbed my attention. So, I ended up purchasing these two. Now, tektites come in many different forms. Uh, there's a whole science as to how they're formed and where they're found. I'm not going to go into that. This is basically a show and tell. So, this is my very first one from 2014. Now, this particular one is 142 grams, which is rather large as tektites go, especially Indochinites. So, here is my very first number one tektite. This is the second tektite I bought from the fellow at the Ventura County Fairgrounds. You see, it's a completely different shape, but it is exactly the same thing. Now, these are created by a meteorite impact, creating enough heat that it melts the surface material, blasts it back into space, and it falls back to Earth. And depending on its orientation and the spinning, I guess that's the whole science of how these things are formed. I'm not going to go into that. There's a lot more people that know a lot more about this stuff than I do. So there's my second Indochinite. So here's my third example of an Indochinite. Now this particular one is 174 grams. I purchased this in Tucson a few years after I bought those first two. What got me is the humongous amount of pockmarks on this thing just on every surface. I just couldn't get over it. Couldn't keep my eyes off this thing, so I had to get it. And it was relatively cheap. So this one is number three, and I think that's all the Indochinites I have of this form. This is called a dumbbell, by the way, for obvious reasons. I call them the dog bone, but whatever. Now another type of tektite is called a Filipinite because he's from the Philippines. This particular one. It's from the, from the Rizal province, so it's called a Rizalite. It's the exact same chemical structure as the previous Indochinites, being part of the Indochinite field. But this particular one is 153 grams. I bought this in Tucson some years ago. I just love the shape of this thing. There is some aerodynamic principles going on as to why we get these kind of grooves and this kind of like puffed out pieces here. I think they call these bread baskets soccer balls but just look at that so that is one of the two that I have now this is my second example of a Rizalite also from the Philippines just like the first one this is the second one I bought in Tucson it's a little bit larger this one is 216 grams and I bought both of these at the same time I couldn't figure out which one I liked better so I just bought both of those and that's my go-to move when I can't make up my mind. I usually buy both. Uh, gets expensive, but what the heck. So that's my second Rizalite. So moving on, let's take a look at some Libyan Desert Glass. Now, the Libyan Desert Glass has been known for thousands and thousands of years. In fact, the ancient Egyptians uh, used it for all kinds of things. They even made tools out of it, decorative items. A piece of it is actually found in, on King Tut's breastplate when they pulled his mummy out of the tomb. Now, this particular piece is 488 grams. But if you look closely at the surface, you see all the little brown specks in there. That's actually part of the base material that the meteor, that the tectite was formed from. And also, scientists have found pieces of the meteorite embedded in some of the, these glasses. So it's a really interesting... Uh, piece. Now, the colors can vary from white to yellow to apple green to brown to black. Uh, 
the clearer pieces are used for jewelry and decorative items. Uh, but it's just a really fascinating piece of glass. There's so much going on here. It's crazy. So that's my first piece. I actually have four pieces I'm going to show. This next piece of living desert glass is a slight shade yellower than the last piece I showed you. This is 109 grams, highly sculpted by the wind. As you can see, so it's been exposed for many years. And on one surface, there is a hole going down the center. It's right there. And it has some actual sand trapped inside right there. You can see it barely. But this one is just beautiful. I've had this for a couple of years, and it's uh, just a nice, nice, interesting piece. By putting a flashlight behind this piece, you, you see the translucence is yellow to a slight hint of green. It's kind of interesting how these things shine. This next piece is a multicolored uh, 136 gram piece of living desert glass and it has everything it goes from transparent to translucent to solid color anywhere from yellow to brown to black there just isn't enough nice things to say about this one actually Put it a little closer here the dimpling is just amazing on the surface and the camera does not do it justice That's the ground line right there. There you go. When I put a flashlight behind these things, everything changes. The light refraction just changes the colors. You can see the internal inclusions, um, all the flaws and interesting little areas. There's that pebble right there. Just beautiful. There's the money shot right there. Now this is my last piece of Bolivian desert glass and the largest. This is 597 grams. It looks totally black. It does have some layering right there. Some brown, black. One of the interesting things, little secrets that it holds, that piece right there. Now to me that looks like a leaf that's been embedded in the glass, but of course that's impossible. It's actually an occlusion that filled up with sand uh, being exposed to the weather. There's the hole right there. It's just an interesting piece, but that's not what really makes it interesting. So this piece holds a surprising little secret. If I take a flashlight like this, put it behind here, check it out. Completely apple green. Up, down, sideways. Absolutely perfect apple green. That is the reason I bought this. But there you go. 597 grams of perfect the green Libyan desert glass. The final piece I'm showing today is actually the smallest tectite in my collection. This is an 11 gram piece of moldavite coming out of the Czech Republic. Now the main characteristic you see in Moldavite is a green translucent. So let's turn this on and take a look. There it is. That's your typical look for Moldavite. This thing around, there's the other side. Not quite gem quality, but that's okay. That's my little chunk of Moldavite. So there you have it. That's all my Tektites.